Coming up on this episode of Design to the Nines, I have teamed up with Yami from the Latina Next Door for her Look for Less Challenge, and I am excited about it because I'm going to be knocking off this Pottery Barn slip covered bench. We're gonna be doing it for a tiny fraction of the cost, so if that sounds good to you, stay tuned. Welcome to Design to the Minds. I'm Natalie Callahan, and if this is the first time we're meeting, welcome to my channel. I am on my way to the Goodwill. I have driven 45 minutes to go to this Goodwill because I just have not had the best luck thrifting in my area. I'm hoping to find a bench today because we are knocking off a Pottery Barn bench and I'm gonna teach you how to do a slip cover. Wish me luck. I've been struggling to find a good thrift store here. If not, I've got a good backup and we will go with it on Facebook Marketplace. But I just wanted to see what I could find. I think I might've hit the mother load because it says Goodwill Outlet and I'm hoping that that means like some really deeply discounted stuff. I hope all of my thrifting dreams are about to come true. No dice. Uh, it was kind of the most different Goodwill I have ever been to. Everything was just in this giant bin. I mean, I guess that's why they call it an outlet. I have another idea, so I'm gonna give that a try and hopefully we'll have some luck. No dice. So now we're gonna try the Habitat for Humanity Restore. Okay, no luck at Habitat Restore. So I think it's time to go with the Facebook find. I should have just done that to begin with, but I'm really trying to find some good thrift stores and I just not. So we are back from our thrifting adventures and I still haven't found a good thrift store. So if you know good thrifting for furniture and home decor items in the greater Orlando area, hook a girl up. And I love thrifting, but we succeeded in the end and we found this off of the Facebook marketplace. And I learned from that experience that if you find something that works, just go get it. In my case, I was just hoping to find some good thrifting along the way, which I didn't, but I did end up with a good bench. And this floral fabric is so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> when I was looking for a piece, I really wanted something that was about the same dimensions as the original, and this is that. It's a little bit narrower, not much, but other than that, the width and the height and all of that is good for what we're looking for. What we're gonna be doing is a slip cover. Doing a slip cover, especially on a bench like this, this is straight stitching. You can handle it, I promise, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. And the first thing we're gonna do is this was tufted with just a couple of buttons, and we're gonna remove those in our inspiration piece it was smooth and I'm also gonna go ahead and try to remove this piping because I don't want it to be a bump in our slip covers now this part is completely optional you don't have to do this this is just my own personal preference because I think that there might be a little bit of indentations from where the buttons were I am just gonna add a layer of batting that I already had on hand that's left over from my dining room chair makeover. If you haven't seen that episode, I'll put the link in the description box below. Watch that afterwards. I totally transformed my dining room chairs. That's another one if you're interested in reupholstery or slip covering. I wanted to show you the fabric that I got to match this one. I went into Joann's and I found this, which is pretty much spot on, honestly. It's a really good match. This is by Nate Burkus. It was regularly $19.99 a yard, and of course, they have sales on their home decor fabric pretty much most of the time, and this is 50% off, so it was $9.99 a yard, which is really good for home decor fabric, which can really run you a lot of money. So let's flip this over and see if we did a good job. This is the moment of truth, and I think we did. So then what we're gonna do is you're gonna want to measure the top. And I kind of already know that we're about 48 inches by, and I think this is about 18 inches. Nope. 16. <laughs> so I'm gonna cut out it to be a little bit bigger because you wanna allow for kind of like a seam allowance. So I'm gonna cut it out to 49 by 17, which is not a ton, but I don't want it to be like uber big. So I kind of want it sitting on top. We want to measure the top to the ground. 
So after you have all of your measurements, I suggest adding about three quarters inch to each side for seam allowances. And since we are basically cutting out a bunch of rectangles, all you really need to do is add an inch and a half to all of your dimensions when you're cutting out your fabric. Since there's no curving pieces, it's pretty simple. But anytime I make a slip cover, I typically add about three quarter inch extra for all seam allowances. Since this is a stripe fabric, I try to center all of my stripes on the middle so that it balances out and is not off centered. And then when you're doing a hem, I allot for about an inch for the hem on the bottom and three quarters for the seam allowance up top. This is really simple. You don't have to do any weird cuts. And then we'll do some end pieces to put underneath to um, for the corner so you don't see this floral fabric poking through because that wouldn't be very pretty. For those of you who are beginning to sewing or have never sewn before, this is actually a pretty easy project and I believe that you can do this. Now, I wanted to tell you that I do have a video, it's one of my few videos over on IGTV where I show you how to thread a machine, how to thread a bobbin, and also how to do a straight stitch. And I'll put the link to that in the description box below. So if you've never done that before, you can go over and refer to that video to get some basic sewing skills. We're going to start by doing a finished edge on all of the side pieces leaving four and a half inches not sewn at the top where they will be attached to each other. Now the proper way to do this is finish all the edges with zigzag or a serger. I don't do it a lot of times and I find it's okay. The problem is is when you go to wash it that's when you really have the issues so I will tell you you probably ought to do your finish edges with a zigzag but I'm probably not going to. Don't judge. <laughs> because our piece is striped and isn't like looking so beautiful with my other stripes, it's not clashing at all. <laughs> Anyways, because it's striped, I want to be very careful about how I go about the piping. So that's what we're gonna do right now is work on the piping and make sure that it all lines up. So I cut my fabric to one and a half inch and then I'll put my piping inside and we'll sew a seam. But before I do that, I wanna make sure that all of our stripes line up and that when we go around back, that they will all be lined up. We'll cut this on the edges to match up with the stripes. We'll also make sure that the stripes line up with the side pieces as well. So we want all of the piping to line up stripe wise with each of our pieces. So in order to do that, we just need to take a little bit more time than normally. Normally I say the piping doesn't matter all that much, but when you're doing stripes like this, it kind of matters. This will take a little bit extra time, but it will be totally worth it in the end. And it will make our knockoff all the more convincing. Because I was so concerned about making sure that the stripes matched up, I'm doing my piping a little bit different. So I wanted to tell you and show you kind of what I've got going on. First of all, I really like to use 530 seconds piping. I buy it in bulk um, off of Amazon because it's the cheapest that way. It ends up being like, I don't know, 25 cents a yard. So it's like ridiculously cheap and we're gonna end up needing oh, maybe three yards at the most. So that ends up being like 75 cents for our project, super cheap. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and lined up all of the stripes and you can see, and then I've already, sewn the seams together on the corners and I'm gonna just when I make my piping I'm gonna do it as I go and that way I know that my stripes are gonna match up a lot of times I'll just pre make a whole bunch of piping and just go to town because it doesn't really matter because there's a busy pattern or something like that because of the stripes I'm just gonna do it as I go and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my piping and we are gonna place it inside about right in the center right there and we are going to wrap our fabric around it and make sure that it's tucked right back in and then as we go we're going to just stitch it to the fabric stitch it right in place and then we will know our stripes will match up that's not normally how i do it but i think for this situation it's the best option I leave the first couple of inches of my piping unsewn until we get to the end and you'll see why. 
Also, when I do the piping, I use my zipper foot and we will pretty much be using this for the remainder of the project. This helps you get right up next to the piping without it pushing it out of the way. When you get to the corner, leave the needle in the fabric, lift up the presser foot and turn the fabric and then replace the presser foot and sew again. When you get to the end, you are going to make sure that the piping is cut to where the corner is, but leave about an inch of extra fabric, which we will then fold back and wrap around the beginning piece. I did this on the corner this time, but normally I do not do that. I like to do it on the straight edge because it makes it a little bit easier, but doing this process gives it a much more finished feel instead of crisscrossing and cutting them off. It just looks better this way. So really funny, I had exactly the amount of thread in my bobbin to finish this. It ran out literally as we were finishing our piping. This is the hardest part, so now it's gonna be smooth sailing from here and we're gonna attach the skirt. Okay, so now we're gonna stitch each corner of the skirt together. Then after that, we're gonna put the corner flaps on to hide anything from the corners. <laughs> So the way I go about pinning the top to the sides is I always start at the corners. I always stick pins in my mouth. I know it's not the safest, but <laughs> it's how I do it. Don't do this at home. If my mom's watching, sorry. <laughs> I know you taught me better. <laughs> so I find the corner and I match it up to the seam and I put a pin there. And then I move to the center in our case, we have perfect places to put pins. We're just gonna put them at every stripe corner just to make sure that all of the stripes line up. So we'll just go ahead and get this all pinned up and then we're gonna sew it on. And then the last thing that we'll need to do is just hem it and it will be done. And we'll see how good of a knockoff I did. <laughs> Okay, so I wanna show you one boo-boo that happened. It's bound to happen. I've been sewing for 30 years, 30 plus <laughs> years, even with all of that experience under my belt. Things happen when you're working with a lot of different layers of fabric. So I'm gonna show you that. There's a boo-boo right here in the corner. And then there's one thing that I want to tweak that I want to get a little closer to the original. And that is just to tighten it up in the corner so it, it slightly pulls. Um, in the original, you'll notice that up on the corners, it kind of pulls in and is a little bit snug. I almost think it looks kind of like a mistake, you know, like it's pulling like a little too tight, tighter than it should. But for the sake of the dupe, we're gonna imitate it and go for that look as well. Okay, so you can kind of see right here that I puckered up and all what we'll do is we'll just kind of unpick this and we'll just redo this tiny section here. We don't need to redo the whole thing. We'll just rip open the seam here, smooth that out and fix that error. And here to get it to pull, we'll just tighten up the seam a little bit more so that it kind of pulls a little bit like the original. Instead of doing a traditional hem, I decide to use peel and stick fusing tape so you can't see any stitching. This seems to match the original the best. My hem ended up being one and a quarter inch and it's as easy as peeling and sticking the fuse tape to the fabric and pressing it on. So the advertised price on the website was $950, but I wanted to see the actual price once you included shipping. So I went through the checkout process and discovered that by the time you add shipping and tax and all of that, you're into it $1,170. And you're gonna have to wait six weeks to get it. As far as knockoffs are concerned, I feel like this is about as close as you can come. I ended up spending around $48, which is less than 5% of the original cost. And so for a 95% savings, that's pretty good. I, I don't know that it, I could stomach forking over all of that extra cash. Mm -hmm. 
Now that you've watched my episode, I'd invite you to pop on over to the Latina Next Doors channel and watch her episode. I've provided the link in the description box below. And while you're over there, buzz through the entire playlist and I know you'll get all kinds of inspiration on how to get the look for less. And if you wanna see more of my knockoffs, you can check out this playlist right here. And until next time, bye.